We came down here this morning to make a video on making salt brine with a Daltmeyer machine. And uh, this is Miguel. And we're going to walk around the machine the first time before we fire anything up. Uh, we did hook the water supply up for the KZ valve so we can have our fresh water coming in there. And we do have our water outlet line to go into the tank. So uh, with that being said, first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk over and we're going to make sure that our um, switches, there's, there's two switches up here. One of them is a switch, the bottom switch. And when the water level gets up so high, it'll actually say time to clean screen. The next switch, if the water level still continues to rise, will say reduce flow. And then that right there will shut this KZ valve off. And then when that KZ valve shuts off, there's no more water feeding into the tank, into the above ground to get it to uh, go into the tank to make salt brine. Um, Miguel, or if I can have you watch that screen, and I'm going to push the very first switch in there, and it should light up the time to clean screen. Okay. Did it light up? Okay, and then the next switch I'm going to push, and that activated your valve. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and turn the hydraulics on, and we're going to lift the hopper up, and we're going to check out the the uh, the floats that turn the pump on. And there's another float that shuts the KZ valve off. Okay, when we do that, we want to pin the screen up. And then we'll lower the hopper back down. Okay. And this is all with the master switch in, in automatic. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to this float. This one here is the one that runs the KZ valve. Okay, and then this one here runs the pump. So if you have, uh, if you have an issue where the pump isn't coming on, that's because that, there might be something messed up with that float. And uh, if, if you have, for instance, the water overflowing out of the bottom of the tank, it could be that flat valve there stuck. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and drop it back down. And we'll go over these controls here in a second. But I just want to make sure the functions work. Okay, we're going to un undo the screen because the only time it gets pinned is when you want to go ahead and clean the bottom of the hopper out. Otherwise, the, this is never pinned while you're making material. Okay, now it's unpinned. And what we're going to do next is we're going to check the fresh water valve. Uh, we should say the dilute valve instead of the fresh water valve because we're actually going to inject the water into the pump and that, that's how we're going to get our solution where we want it at. With the water already on, we're going to go ahead and turn the pump on on manual mode and we're going to go ahead and turn the pump on manually when the pump kicks on, this freshwater valve, or this dilute valve, should turn on. And it didn't. Oh. Okay. The reason it didn't work is I did not have the water supply on, on this valve over here, okay?
Okay. Every time the pump kicks on, that valve there will kick on and it'll inject the fresh water into the there to dilute it. Um, we're going to go ahead and through now and walk just around and, and I'll explain some stuff. Basically what we have here, this is a 2017 downflow brine maker. Okay, so the water comes in and it gets injected up above. It goes through the salt, goes through the, the water has to filter through the screen and then it goes into the hopper. When the pump float kicks up and says it's time to come on to start to transfer it over to the tank, then the dilute solenoid will open up and then we can go ahead and set where we want our solution at. So we give the proper uh, amount of salt in the water so it does the, the maximum work for us. Okay. Um, basically what you have here first is you have your master switch for turning electricity on and off. So we're going to turn it on. Okay, and then we have here is the automatic and the off and the shutdown mode. Okay, right now it's in the off mode. If I turn it to the automatic mode, you will see water come out of these two spray bars here that go inside the hopper. Okay. So the water's going through there and it's coming down, okay? I'll shut that off for a second. If I put it to the shutdown mode, it does the same thing. It kills the water to this here. So there's no more water going through that KZ valve at all to go in and, and uh, make salt brine. Okay, so we're gonna leave it in the off position. The reduced flow is one of those sensors up there, the switches. It was the second switch that I hit that actually shut that KZ valve off. The time to clean screen is the first switch up there that I hit and it actually lights it up and with these being LED they're kind of hard to see. Okay. The next one over here is the pump. Okay. It can run, the pump can run in automatic mode or it can run in manual mode. Okay. And when we tested that um, dilute valve solenoid out we checked it on the manual mode so we could control when it came off and on okay the next switch we have over here is the hydraulic so you turn it on and you just flip the switch to go up or flip the switch to go down we're going to go ahead and flip it up and lock the hopper in place Okay, then we'll come over here. And we'll lock it in place. Okay, what we're gonna do is add the hydrometers and we like to have a little w solution in there so when we put them in, they don't go all the way to the bottom and break. We have salt in the hopper now, and then we've got our hoses opened uh, on the tank, and we're gonna start making salt brine now. With this here system, the stainless steel bars in the center, the, uh, the water actually is in the middle of the salt. The first pipe is in the second pipe. The top one is above the salt. When we start pumping over, we ought to be right at 89% on one and 23% on the other hydrometer. And when you first start it out, it's probably going to be strong because all the fines in the salt. And you'll have to just adjust from there. When the pump kicks on, the solenoid going to the dilute valve will open up. And that's when you adjust your, your uh, water flow. And I like to do it on this valve here because it's easy for me. And then Miguel will just now, he'll open up the water supply going in and we'll see where, where our solution is at. So we're quite rich. But that first batch is never a good reading. So. Right, because all, all the fines in there.
right here is the is the main water supply that goes and feeds the uh, uh, dilute valve here okay so that's the dilute valve when it kicks on there's another valve here that they put on there a gate valve well some people like to adjust it here some like to adjust it here and some even like to adjust it back there uh, when we opened this up all the way to full flow we couldn't get enough fresh water going in to dilute it down so we open this up all the way and now we're going to adjust it by this here so i'm thinking about right there we should be pretty close And everybody has their own little quirks on how they want to do things. And as long as we end up with the same results, that's all that matters. All right, we've got as much salt as we can get out of there now without shoveling it all around. When, when the salt gets down so low, it wants to run to the corners and to the fastest way to get down to the hopper. So we can't control how, how much solution we make it. So we're gonna, we turned it from the auto to the shutdown mode. And basically what that does is it lets the pump run. It lets fresh water go into that uh, dilution valve and and then it's pumping it over when all the water is out of the top and out of the bottom the pump will shut down and then once it shuts down we'll let it set for a little while in case it kicks back on because you always have water dripping out of the salt we'll try to get as much water out of there as possible and then we'll start up from there again and then we'll go ahead and uh clean out the system there we'll, we'll end up dropping the hopper down cleaning it all out and and cleaning it up and showing you what you got what you should do to uh, winterize it right before we we shut the camera off just a little bit ago the pump made a different sound in there and it was sucking air so all the all the brine had been sucked out of the holding tank and we were sucking air so we loosened up the uh, float sensor there and pulled it back out just a little bit so it shuts off and we don't burn out the pump We've waited about 10 minutes now for the salt, for all the water to drain out of the salt. So what we're gonna do within the shutdown mode is we're gonna turn the pump on manually. And we're just gonna run the pump until we hear it suck in air. And then we're gonna go ahead and shut the pump off and shut the valve off going to the tank. Okay. And then Miguel over there will shut the valve, the valve off over there to the tank. So we don't have any way of, of salt brine coming back this way. Now what we're gonna do is Miguel will, if he can get in the loader, and then we will turn the hydraulics on and we're gonna do a clean out mode. I like to raise it up just a little bit to get the pressure off of the, the uh, cam locks and then raise it up and pull it over. And remember on this here, we want these here in the open position so when we drop this down, the screen comes down with us, okay? Now we'll go ahead and have him go ahead and drive in. Go back. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this flap and stick it in inside the bucket so when we bring the hopper down, the salt stays inside and goes into the uh, hopper instead of on the ground. Okay. Okay. We'll make sure it's clear, and then we're going to lower it down. Okay, what we did is we, we, we're letting it drop down, but it's starting to overflow over here, so I'm gonna have him back out and dump this, and then he'll come back in and we'll redo it again and get the rest of it out of there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open up the hopper again.
Okay, I'm going to raise it up just a little bit and then we'll have him back away. And then we'll go ahead and clean up whatever's on the, on the ground here. Okay, now we're gonna go turn the hydraulics back on because I shot them off over there while it was dumping. And we're gonna go ahead and lower the screen down and we're gonna wash the inside hopper and the screen out. And then we'll pin this, then we'll go ahead and put the screen up and pin it and then we'll clean the bottom of the hopper out. Now we're going to go ahead and raise the hopper up so we can pin the screen and then clean out inside the hopper. Now we're going to go ahead and put the pins in place to hold the screen up and then we'll lower the hopper down so we can clean the hopper out. If you get too much buildup in there, then floats can't come down and shut off like they need to for like the pump. So like if the pump, if you made like eight, 10,000 gallons and you're make, still making it and the pump doesn't shut off, it's because that float won't go down any farther. So we need to stop and clean the system out. Okay, what I'm gonna have him do now is I'm gonna have him just back the loader up. We're gonna get out there, and I'm gonna take that screen out and we're gonna clean underneath that screen. Some of them screens need to be trimmed just a little bit so they come in and out easier. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and raise it up and then we'll lower the screen down and then this here will be ready. The only thing we gotta do after that is clean up the pump and, and drain it so we don't have any corrosion stuff in it and cycle all the valves so we don't have nothing that breaks. So all we're gonna do is wash the system down because of the corrosion. and wash the pump off in the tanks, the, the brine pump there, and wash this stuff all off so we're nice and clean because those tanks that aren't stainless steel will rust. Okay, now that we got the, the output hose taken off, we're gonna open this up and just drain everything. We can actually, if we want to, go ahead and put water through here and that, that'll flush the pump out Get the salt brine out of there. We're going to shut the water flow off and then we're going to drain the valves over here. And uh, for those of you that saw our little mishap here of the water shooting out of this valve when I turned it some different ways, we'll, we'll do it again. Okay, that valve there got water in it and froze. Now the casing 
here is split and that's what's leaking out there. So on this valve here, if you, if you look, I don't know if you can see it, but there's water trickling out right here. On these valves, if we go ahead and cycle them once we drain them, if we cycle them back and forth, water still stands in there. If, if I can have you shut the water flow off, please. And then we'll go through and, and run these valves and you'll see how much water actually comes out of these after we got them drained. Okay. We're going to start from up here and, and drain these valves here. Go back and forth about three times because water sets on the ball there and it will actually end up freezing these here up. Okay, we're going to turn this KZ valve here. And when I say KZ, that's this big two inch valve. We're going to turn it back and forth. We want to cycle that valve this way we don't have water standing on there and, and, and freeze it. Okay, And what we've found out, we like to leave them in the on position so when you go over and come over here and turn this on, that pump, that motor is already opened up and the, uh, there, there are some places, how do I say this, if we go ahead and do it this way, there are some places that have them closed and they leave them off like that. Other places leave them open like that and shut the power off. Then when they do that, they come over and turn it off. Well, if it's froze in there and you go ahead and turn the power back on and you got in the off position, that motor will try to turn. And if this is froze in here, it will take them gears out in that motor. So we try not, we try to leave it in the on position, shut it off and leave it in the on position again. And then we'll go ahead and drain this valve here. Just that little bit of water there will crack them valves to where they don't work and leak. And I might touch on one thing on these big 20,000 gallon tanks we have. If you're pumping in, they have three valves on them. This far right valve is the mixer valve the bottom valve here is is just a two inch inlet straight in and the top one up here is just a two inch straight in so this one here is the mixer and it goes in and tees off and it drops it down to an inch and a half so if you're trying to pump in through there it will restrict the flow this this is designed for mixing in the tank itself